Hi. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, so I'm Chris, and this is Ricardo. Hello. And uh, we're just going to tell you a little bit about who we are and uh, what we've worked on. Um, <clears throat> so I'm Ricardo, and my I have a I run a I have my own website, which is called MrDo.com, which I started like about five or six years ago, where I, for some reason, I decided to start posting some code experiments that I was doing at the time, and somehow it evolved, and people, um, some clients started to, to contact me for getting more projects like that, and like really evolving from what I was doing, and <clears throat> somehow like it, it's gone uh, quite well. Um, what I really like, uh, is really going deep into code, and I don't really set any kind of idea of what I want to do, but I just go into code, and while in the process of coding something, I get some ideas of other th like pieces that I can do. So in the end, I create like kind of toys or like uh, I just um, environments that I use like uh, running on the browser, and at the same time, I'm trying to push a little, push a little bit the um, what you can do on the on the web nowadays. Uh, so. Uh, I've worked on a website called 4chan for the past uh, almost eight years, and it's pretty much defined uh, most of my adult life. Uh, for those who don't know 4chan, you probably know something that's come from it. Um, the LOL cats and, and different kind of like pieces of uh, internet culture, meme culture, as we call it, uh, tends to kind of percolate and, and, and bubble out of 4chan. And, uh, you know, the two things that are most unique about the site are the fact that it's it's mostly anonymous. Um, like 95% of the people who post, you you don't have to register an account, and so you can just go in and, and post anonymously. Um, and it's ephemeral. We don't have any archives. We basically all of the content gets pruned within minutes or seconds, uh, or not seconds, I guess, I mean, minutes or, or hours. Um, and it depends on how many replies something gets. But generally, it's impossible for something to last more than a few hours or a few days on the site. Um, and the, the anonymity on the site has led to this really, um, as I say, raw, unfiltered kind of conversation, um, which which can also be kind of, uh, kind of kind of like a wild west kind of you know crazy, um, but also very creative. Um, it's my belief that you know the anonymity allows for people to be really you know creative because it you know removes this um, you know the failure kind of you know failure following you. Uh, the example I like to use is you wouldn't, you'd probably prefer to learn to ride a bicycle in an empty cul-de-sac uh, as opposed to in front of a you know, stadium full of people. And that's essentially what you're doing when you're, you know, when you contribute online with a name. Um, you know, people can kind of like trace, you know, if you, if you, you know, quote unquote fail at something, people can kind of, you know, that, that failure follows you. But when you're able to contribute anonymously, it allows you to kind of like try, try, try again, and then you're only, you're rewarded for your success, your success instead of punished for your failure. Um, and so, we synced up on like the, these things, um, you know, presence, the idea of like you know, like, like feeling the presence of others. Um, a lot of Ricardo's work has to do with real time, and like ephemerality and permanence, uh, shared experiences, and interface design. Do you want to talk a little about your work with like real time and? Um, yeah, like uh, one of the. Shall we go to the next project? Or to, um, well, one of the the things I really like, um, <laughs> it's um, like I've been doing like stuff with video and. Um, Usually take a lot of time to any having to do any kind of rendering and, and really takes a lot of time and uh, from my past like my background is on the demo scene which everything needs to be running like in real time and somehow I got used to that like I doesn't need to render it everything is done in um, uh, in real time like without having to pre-calculate anything and that somehow translated to also like the fact of having to do like uh, um, real time uh, in experiences, let's say, like um, stuff running uh, on the browser, or, like having kind of merging a little bit with the shared experiences uh, that you can go to a website and, and kind of be acting with other people in real time, um, which is more or less a project that we're going to, um, oh, is it, is it that one, um, which is a, this project. It was uh, a project that I was working some months ago. That somehow, like this is one of the uh, like an, an idea that I had some some years ago. That it was it was always like something you wanted to wanted to do was to be able to um, to contribute or to to draw like with another friend that on the internet. Like you are not in the same place, but you 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 know that you want to. Um, it will be interesting to see if you have the same sketch, but all of you to draw something together. But um, <clears throat> while I was called, while I was uh, programming this thing, which was it was just because it was the, this new technology called Node.js, that it allowed this thing, 
um, while I was doing this, I've somehow I forgot about the idea of like uh, just being you and your friend, but also like, oh, what about if anyone that connects to the website can draw at the same time? And what happens in, in that case? I'll, I'll, I didn't really plan anything of this, like I just did it and then I somehow got surprised or like the whole thing. And one of the things that it happens, like as, as we see, is that the, the background doesn't really, like the whole thing gets more like black and more black every time that someone connects and, and keeps drawing. So what it, for laziness, I didn't really want to update like the people that was connecting to the site. They will see something white, and then they will see all the people like drawing. But uh, so you wanted to refresh the whole thing, you would just press like you will reload, and or you will just like kind of like a like, what's what the name? It, of that? It's like an etch sketch. Every time you reload this page, it's blanked. And so like when you load the multi-user sketch pad, you're joining. You know, it's kind of like part of a timeline that's been going on for you know months and months now. And so you can only view. Um, you know what's visible. You know after after you join, and so every time you reload the page, it kind of wipes itself, like shaking against your sketch. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, um, apart from from this idea, it was that when I I was showing the oh I'm I don't know if we we can show the one that is is working right now. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Like this is so this is a website that is running all the time. Well, it needs to restart it from time to time. Yeah. But uh, like people will connect and will start to draw with, with random people on the net, and they can just chat and say like, just try to do, okay, let's in this case like let's try to do like a horse, and they are two people like working together that they don't know each other like trying to draw a horse, and the fact that it's showing the the cursor like for each one, it was it was like when I did this thing, I got surprised because it was showing that it was like very humane, like it was showing like. Like if it was a person, like there was this this example that there was like a girl that was doing like um, I think it was houses or like a little. It, it really felt like it was a little girl. I don't know if it was a little girl, but it was like drawing like um, um, bunnies and houses and stuff like that. And someone will come on top of it and just scratch over it, and then you will see the pointer of the girl like moving moving away like a ooh, <laughs> like kind of scared. So it was it was I was kind of surprised like oh what what did I do like I didn't really. Expected to be like to see like people behave like just playing with all this, and it's really funny and interesting. I left it, left the project open, like to see what what comes up and just for the people to join and draw, and draw together. People too will kind of like hide in the corners. You can drag the canvas around by holding the space bar and dragging it, and people will kind of like go off into their own little corners to take kind of draw privately. When I first, um, uh, I've been familiar with Ricardo's work for. Um, probably over a year now, and I'm you know a huge fan of this uh, the sketch pad. And for the longest time, though, I thought that you know you couldn't actually move the canvas, and so people who could afford like 30-inch Apple <laughs> monitors could like you know see all of it. Um, and like what he just described, as far as like did the cursor position, uh, you know, because multi like multi-user sketching apps have, have existed, but like it's really you know, beautiful the way that the cursor position works is like it's a real like rush to you know to be drawing something and to see somebody else kind of hover you know come over to your drawing and like you know not everybody uses the chat in fact this is probably the, the more active i've seen on the left panel you can see chat um but like you know immediately you're just like oh my god are they going to help me are they going to hurt me are they going and you kind of like run away from them and it's it's like this kind of like this like hunt and chase that happens and and kind of like a pause people will kind of like meander over and then they'll leave um, and you know, like one of the things that we both really love are these kind of like really simple interfaces that um, I mean, you know, he, he fit you know the, the instructions in the top left there. It's you know two sentences, but interfaces that lack um, instructions and lack rules, and the users can kind of you know generate their own their own kind of rules and and games, um, you know, with kind of like a shared um, you know common set of tools, and how you know again like all their their use of it kind of you know like one informs the other. Um, you know, one of my favorite apps on the web is this is like ten year old um, flash game uh, called Lunch Timers or it's like lunchtimers.com and it's just this refrigerator magnet game and like we've all seen these probably uh, you know, hopefully on a refrigerator at some point in our life and so again this is this is just this this game where um, the only thing you know are the number of players on the game it's up in the upper left um, and there's there's no there, there are no rules there are, there's no instructions when you when you hit this page but people have created all sorts of really wonderful ways of using it um, where you can see people will spell their name people will you know I don't know talk about you know kind of like put movies um, it's common for people that come from certain communities to like write out their community. Um, 
people will, you know, obviously swear. They'll, but then there are kind of like meta games that you can play on top of actually just spelling things, where you, you know, people will be spelling kind of like you know long, say long words or sentences, and there there will be like a guy who just wasted it for the last, you know, the last moment you're about to complete the word or the sentence, he'll drag away a letter, and you'll have to like go chase that letter and bring it back. And there are people who will just clump all of the letters together, uh, like that. Because it's really hard, it's like hard to pick one letter. You know, you have to kind of like drag them all out and spread them all out again to find the letter that you want. And so, like people will just you will just play this game where all they do is they just sit on this page. And you know, there are twelve players on this, and they're just basically like kind of griefing these other players. Um, and and you know, I was actually I you know, I was the one who screencapped this. And you know, out of the twelve players, probably like one or two were kind of dragging the letters away. But the vast majority of us were all. And I wanted to see this happen, so I was like helping them do it because I really wanted this screenshot. Um, and I saw this happen, actually, um, before Valentine's Day. And I was sitting with a friend and telling him like how incredible this game was. And it didn't look like anything special. It looks like you know a few, few slides ago. And you could see somebody was starting to draw that like upper left quadrant of a heart. And I like sat there, and I was like giddy. And I was like, oh my god, oh my god, look, look, what's, look what's happening. And you know, I, I joined in. And so you know, the five of us you know, created this heart just completely, again, like without being able, there's no chat you know, that happens. It's just you know, all just learning from one another. And we drew this thing. We you know, wrote, be my Valentine. And you know, a second later, it's gone. Um, so again, like we, I think like both Ricardo and I are really you know, fans of these. Again, like really simple kind of elegant interfaces that uh, don't really need to explain themselves, don't have instructions or rules, and, and the users kind of get to create um, you know different ways of using it in different games. And and these experiences that are like you know the way that I just described that story and remember that story. Um, is, is like, you know, even though I can show you screenshots of it, there's no way that you can kind of experience what I did. Um, it was this completely like this like shared experience with like me and those, those 12 other, or I guess five other people in the, in the case of the heart. And you know, it's ephemeral, like it's gone, right? You know, even though that screenshot exists, like you know, there's something that was like very special about being in that, that room and having that like kind of shared time and space with that you know, set of other users. Um, you know, that's something that I really love. You know, another thing that we, we both, um, you know, are a big fan of, uh, are like inline commenting and annotations. Again, like interface design is something we synced up on, and, and like that, that basically comments should, um, and the way that you, you interact with content shouldn't, shouldn't be like relegated to, to kind of like a comment ghetto, or, you know, like comments on websites are kind of a second class citizen. They're always, you know, somewhere kind of off in the, off in the, you know, the bottom of the screen, or, you know, you have to kind of like click to see it. Um, it's like relegated to this, you know, it's not, it's not like one with the content. Um, this is a Japanese website uh, called Niki Niko Doga. This is the American version of it that just launched last month, I believe. And the way that they do um, comments on this site are there's there's not you know how YouTube you've got the comments on the on the bottom obviously, and in this this Japanese site they put the comments right on top of the video, so the you know the comments are are one with the video. Um, and in, in the Japanese version, there are like very uh, really cool ways of like uh, in Japanese internet culture, there's this really rich um, uh, culture for um, uh, ASCII art, like um, like Shift Gis is is the the character set, and they create these um, really in incredible uh, like drawings using just text. And each of these little characters that they have have like the names and backstories and. And like one is named Kiko and one is named She, and there's like a whole like like a, basically a book's been written on She collaboratively by um, just you know Japanese um, like internet users. And so uh, this is a, again an American example or an English example, but these like little characters will like fly across the screen. It's it's really just fat, and it really you know adds something. It makes like the video watching experience more rich. It's it's kind of distracting, but again, it's not. It doesn't detract from the video. It adds something really special to it. So when Chris was showing me this this example, I was I somehow remembered these um, the interface from SoundCloud. I don't know if you guys know about this website, uh, but it, they introduced this idea like you see the the um, waveform of the music, and you can put like um, the comments or your comments or annotations are like every like specific times of the of the whole uh, track and. Somehow the, he was showing me the the, uh, the video moving, and somehow it, it reminded me to the idea of like using um, this like an idea I had like to use this interface just just to remove this the whole waveform the, the whole uh, waveform and just use the comments like in, with black background and just use the comments to kind of visualize what the actual soundtrack is or like what the actual tune. Uh, I don't know if like we have the example for that. We have an example. Uh, we'll is it? We have the one that you gave me. Yeah, yeah. What, what is? Sorry about the the t type of music, though. <laughs> but if.
That's more or less how it works. Like you can, if you imagine like you use the, like a black screen and you're seeing all those comments like you change like flickering quickly. Oh one, of, one of the things I asked Ricardo, I was like, I wonder if um, if you. Uh, you created a site that showed just the comments if people could actually guess the song that was being played. Like I imagine, you know, because like they're, you know, obviously people follow artists really closely. I imagine if you're like a, you know, Michael Jackson fan and you knew every Michael Jackson song, you, I'm just curious if you could look at like comments synced to one of his, like to Thriller, and you could guess what the song was just based on the comments. That's something we should, we didn't build that, but we'll, we'll, build, that. <laughs> we'll, we'll build that another time. It was a nice um, idea. And here's an example of, again, like lunch timers, this, this game. It doesn't look like anybody's really. Oh, there are eight players. Never mind. Somebody's sleeping, apparently. Um, and uh, we have a lot of examples. This is it, it just a, to give you a kind of taste for what scrolling comments look like. This is a ridiculous video of just a cat making noise. And uh, it's just like five, five, five minutes of this. This is maybe like Lolcats 2.0. This is like I can actually <laughs> Uh, 2.0. Um, so we looked at comments and we also looked at annotations. Um, annotations being, you know, like another way of kind of marking up content, uh, you know, making kind of a reference to it or trying to highlight something, uh, something else to others. And, uh, you know, Ricardo did this really incredible experiment on YouTube that I wanted to share with you. Oh, and in school, we actually discovered today too. There's a there's a whole there's a group on on Flickr for annotations, and the group description is: This group hopes to explore annotations and the broadest understanding of the term, add your understandings and interpretations to the pool. So I thought that was pretty cool. And so all of these um, things that are added to the pool are you know things that people kind of like collaboratively almost like remix the annotations together and kind of like come up with ways to annotate. So you yeah. want to tell the story? Yeah. <laughs> so so this guy, I'm I'm sorry, he's in Spanish too, but um. Uh, we came up with the idea of uh, like this. This guy is like the, the let's say the CEO of AT and T here, uh, but in Spain. And he was talking about um, the new, uh, the whole revolution of iPhones and how the people, how the little kids were getting a lot of money using uh, his networks, like his uh, telef uh, telephone networks. And he was like really being very annoying and like very ignorant, like kind of saying like those guys really need to pay us because they are downloading the applications that they are getting the money from using our networks. And he was really, really being very annoying and very uh, uh, pissing everyone off. So somehow we, we got this idea like downloading the, the, this video from the actual news website and we put it on YouTube uh, and allowed like the whole uh, internet, let's say, to put uh, annotations on the video, like a, a kind of crowdsourcing of the, the annotations. And you'll see how it works. <laughs> I love how in this video there are certain points where like basically like you just saw the comments just kind of like explode. There, there are like certain kind of things that he says that just get everybody really kind of riled up. And then Ricardo was also counting in the yeah, upper left hand it's, corner. It's just like you're really using the, the YouTube uh, interface for doing annotations to do... <laughs> to do many like tricks like like here like people is just um, kind of uh, making up um, what the audience on, on that conference may be thinking like whenever he's doing something like maybe the those people like saying oh the fuck and stuff like that but uh, there, were, there were many what were you counting in the upper left there though uh, he has uh, one of those things like he keeps saying like este, este, which you know, doesn't really mean anything but it's like a like a kind of a waiting but it's you know it's like it's the um, um counter of yeah <laughs> kind, of, kind of thing yeah so it was, but after like uh, I think it was, um, I think we left, uh, we left this for like three hours or something like this, and we had enough. We had the whole video done. Like everyone put their own ideas and their own comments, and that that was the, the whole project done. Um, so, so we spent the the like our process yesterday was you know first of all again I was I was super excited to meet Ricardo because I followed his work for uh, <laughs> for for a long time, and, and we share a lot of mutual friends. Um, and so we just spent the first three hours just hanging out um, and just talking about you know you know our work, our friends' work, you know sites that we like. We made like a whole list of websites that we really loved, and again these kind of like uh, themes that we synced up on. We also kind of traded roles. Um, Ricardo is one of the most gifted programmers that I've ever met, and he's definitely a much better programmer than I am. And so even though I came in as the technologist, he's he's the you know brilliant with JavaScript and all of these things and, and, and it. And he has he he tells him more like an artist than not. Yeah, like I, I like because it took us a few hours. Like we. we we basically, you know, we, we, we 
sat around and just hung out. We got lunch. We came back. Um, Lauren came in and said hi, and we were like, yeah, we don't have an idea yet. And it's like 7 or 8 p.m. Uh, <laughs> and we just had these like notepads, uh, you know, just filled up with stuff that we really liked. And then all of a sudden, you know, like we, we just started, I forgot what, like, what sparked the idea, but we just started thinking like, oh, what if you could have like a layer to the web and do this and that, and you know, we jumped up and started whiteboarding everything. Um, and he was immediately thinking of like, you know, how do I implement this? And I was just like babbling on and on and on. I don't even know what he was thinking, but I think I, I was. <laughs> I think he more or less came out from like from being on YouTube, and then he was saying that the, like uh, the interface somehow is done. So, so like all the comments and all the the information, like like we have the content at the top, but then you want to go down, like you want to do some comments, you will have to like they moved the the, uh, the text area like up, but before you had to kind of read all the comments that the people were putting, and then by the time you're going to write a comment, you're already influenced by what the people are saying. So we, we kind of, like, he was kind of mentioning, like, this, this idea, like, uh, like having the comments, like, uh, like downgrade, let's say, or how do you, you were saying get over? Yeah, like, basically, again, like, comments are kind of like, you know, again, on every page that you go to, the content is front and center, and, and the, the kind of discussion, the reactions, uh, around the content are kind of you know second class citizens to the content and they're you're put in this like kind of common ghetto as I call it and it's interesting what YouTube has done um, you know I've been thinking a lot about if you watch a YouTube video and you're kind of on the fence uh, before you make your comment if you have to scroll past a lot of kind of like you know I'm sure a lot of these comments are like poking fun at this guy and kind of heckling him <laughs> and really negative <laughs> um, but if like your mother watched this she might be thinking to herself oh that's all pretty reasonable right like yeah of course the they have to pay more for their bandwidth and all that but like you know the 18 year olds are like no screw this guy um, and so, you know, reading through comments before you actually make it to your own comment box, you know, kind of informs the way that you you react and respond to something and, and, and interact with something. And so, YouTube has done this where now they're they're highlighting the first two comments, and and that is, you know, they, they're calling it the best comments. But it also, again, if that's the first, you know, the, the only two things you're seeing before you're given the comment box, that really has a lot to do with, um, you know, the way that you'll probably re you know react. Like, uh, there's the obviously, I think most of us here might have heard the. Um, Friday music video that was Rebecca Black. <laughs> they they disabled comments on that that video because people were you know, really cruel to her, and uh, but you know most people who I like my my gut on that is most people who watch the video are like okay maybe it's not like the best music video the best song but you know, like they probably weren't thinking to themselves, oh, I'm going to write like the nastiest comment that I can. But you scroll past 10 like, like teenagers jumping on this poor girl, people are like okay never mind I'm going to you know fall in line. And there's this kind of like herd mentality that when it comes to commenting. So we came up with something uh, that it didn't have a name until last night, and I got really lucky. I found a domain on my second try. I forgot. I think like I picked something really like that probably been registered for 20 years, like MetaWeb or something, but definitely been registered for a long time. And for some reason, nobody had ever taken behind uh, .de, and so <laughs> <laughs> behind. D uh, uh, do you want to explain like a little bit of? Uh, so we have to to have it more like that. Or we should reload it first. Oh yeah, well, so we tried to finish this, but uh, maybe maybe this night is going to be working properly. Like this is just a prototype. And it was really important to Ricardo too. Like when we were talking about our ideas, um, he really wanted oh, to yeah. build something that people could use. Like that we could actually ship this and have people, you know, have it in front of people and have people using it. And so that's part of the reason that we decided to go with this instead of. Uh, you know, we considered, you know, do we present an idea, do we kind of give an abstract, and, and, and Ricardo's like, no, like, let's, let's do this, we want to do this in front of people. And we both, you know, one of the things we were really excited about was also that we have the ability to tap into two, uh, you know, really great communities. You know, I have 4chan and a, a new community I'm building called Canvas, and Ricardo has, you know, this, this you know, immense following of people who follow Mr. Doob. And uh, so we knew that we could seed, uh, you know, we wanted to do something that was interactive and had, like, user-generated content because we knew that we could seed it with lots of people really quickly. Yeah, something something that kept like had had his his own it, its own life, I say, and rather than having like a, an analysis or some ideas that we had. Um, so so the idea of this one was like uh, to have like a second layer on the on a on the whole internet. So you will go the homepage is obviously not not finished, but um, the idea is that you you go to a, you can go to any website and then you have um, those three options and you can create like a, a other um, annotation here. And they like say like um, you know. <laughs> and the idea is that anyone can go to any website and they can add annotations or like add like images or videos and and see how it's more like having rather than having the comments. <laughs> 
rather than having the comments in the, in the, uh, away from the content, is really being able to put like comments and, and really putting if like one of the ideas was like, <laughs> one of the idea was like if you if there was like a, um, a video on YouTube there was a rip off of another of another video you you could just in this second layer you could just add the link to this the, the original video or like just have another conversation on top of it um, and right now this is only like uh, it only works in, in this laptop but uh, it, it, it was kind of we really tried to make it work it's like, live uh, it's just the, the back end uh, isn't in yeah. place to the, there's no if I, if I refresh this page all this will disappear we really tried to like make it live as like before here to yeah see, I set to up see, like a virtual machine last uh, night yeah. and, like memory table <laughs> <laughs> to, see, to see how people will use it because that's that's one of the points like it's really it really doesn't have the interface it's really simple like you, you can only do this and it gives a lot of options to the people to do like many things that you cannot really think right now, like even like trying to do, I don't know, like drawings with the, the selection thing or stuff like that. And uh, another thing was uh, the idea of like having the, the ticker thing. Yeah, so some of the, the things that we, you know, again, like this is the, that was like the most, most basic, uh, you know, prototype and I'm really yeah. thrilled that Ricardo was able to finish it in time. Um, but there are a lot of things that we wanted to do that we didn't have time to do. Um, I wanted to have a ticker on the top to kind of show you wherever the last comment or the last um, uh, interaction was made, I guess, uh, on, on behind, and have this ticker because I was like really curious to see if people swarm, like, do people want to browse, like, act, do they want to have a passive browsing experience where say you're like kind of stumbling across the web and, and you, you know, you're like, okay, I want to see what's, you know, kind of like behind this page, it's like this metaphor of like looking kind of behind and to see this like meta layer that exists everywhere. Um, or do people actually want to see, you know, basically like where, how do, do people want to follow conversations? Do they want to see where you know, activity is on the web? And so if we had this ticker, would people, would people just kind of, again, like just kind of meander across the web and, and be curious? Or do people, are people going to like sit there and watch that ticker and just like, you know, instantly click on like where, where the conversation is happening? And will like a swarm of people kind of like migrate across the web based on, um, you know, like where kind of conversations are taking place? Um, and Ricardo had a really great idea as far as like ephemeral comments. Yeah, this this more or less came like from another from a part of the conversation was like we were talking about um, like what are those systems for portfolios that whenever you reach to the or like I think they do that for the Facebook uh, comments that whenever you reach to the bottom of the page they will load more stuff and you keep going and you keep going and and for, maybe it's just me but it, it gets frustrating because you want to finish the website it's like it's like a contest you want to finish the, finish the, the, the all the content on the website. And especially now that we we have a lot of and a lot of data and a lot of content being created all the time and, and more or less coming for the with the fact that it's everything is becoming a little bit more like in real time like uh, like people is having more and more data it becomes a problem that to see what's which data you really is really important or not and which one is not and it's more like this kind of. I think by the time when I did the multi-user sketchpad, Aaron, a friend of us, uh, mentioned that, oh, so, so you're not really saving the, the history of your, or the drawing application, so you're doing like 4chan, like, oh, I really didn't know what the 4chan really was doing that. But it was, it's, then I, I found out what, what it, it actually does, and it's interesting because it doesn't, it doesn't store anything, like, how, how long does it save for? No more than a few days. Like, let's say like just a week, and then, sorry. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, so it's, it stays. It keeps the content for a, for a, uh, for a, just for a week, and the only way to for for the content to stay in the page will be for someone to post like an old um, post, like to post it again, and that somehow gives what's important compared to what's the stuff that is just forgotten is because it wasn't that important. So for this one, the idea was um, like obviously if you let, if you put this. Uh, for everyone, like people will start to put a lot of, a lot of information everywhere and, and having comments and, and images. So the idea was just to have like uh, only, let's say, 20 items that you can see, and all of them, like the newest ones, are like the, the ones that has more opacity, and the old ones get less opacity. So it's like it's like you it's like content that you keep adding and it fades away, and it kind of gets a little. Uh, if it's that you can also do conversations. So if you do if there is a conversation that you add a reply, then that becomes on top, and that more or less solved the, the the problem of like uh, really what, what was important or not. And also, it was the ephemeral uh, concept. Yeah, actually, when I when I was like visualizing what Ricardo suggested as far as like fading things out, I immediately loved it, and I thought of like Back to the Future. Where I don't know if you guys remember, but like when Marty McFly uh, <laughs> before like, he what? gets his parents back together, he starts like his his. Um, 
his brother and sister start to disappear from a photo and his hand starts to disappear. And it was like this philosophical, like if a comment doesn't get a reply, did it really exist type like <laughs> plus back to the future. And one of the things that I just like kind of said offhand yesterday when we were talking about ephemerality and, and permanence was um, I feel like we spent 10 years asking ourselves, why can't I store all of my MP3s? And now like the, the question at the top of our mind is why can't I delete my Facebook? Um, it was like, why doesn't my iPod fit all of the MP3s that I want to store? And like, storage is now a solved problem. I mean, you really never have to delete anything again for the rest of your life if you don't want to. And now people are like, you know, everybody is, how do I get rid of my Facebook? How do I get rid of, rid of the you know, photos of me that I don't want my boss to see? Um, and so it's funny how like, there was this, like, this like, shift in, in the way we thought about you know, wanting to keep data where we wanted, 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 and now, you know, now that we have Facebook and all these other services that you know, just kind of catalog our life, we're like, you know, we don't want it. And then just quickly, the last thing we wanted to try was, um, you know, I was really curious about the, the way that people used um, Ricardo's YouTube experiment. I was just like, interested in like, clustering and how if like, the first person comments at somewhere in the timeline, if everybody kind of clusters around that, um, and then if somebody comments later in the timeline, if everybody kind of like, shifts around. Like, I'm curious if, if um, you know, how much of a, again, there's yeah, how, like, a swarm or like, a herd there is to you know, people kind of following. Um, you know, kind of commenting throughout the timeline. So, thank you. Thanks so much. I'm I'm really impressed because I did check in, you know, late at, late like, in the yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> you'd, you'd been hanging out, <laughs> but it came together. Um, so uh, we ran over with that one, so we have shorter time for questions. Um, yeah. This idea of swarming and where people would go as a result of this. I, I wonder about your own experiences or how you project this to other people, how these anonymous experiences then affect your private creative life. Off the online experience. My own private creative or so you talk about would would so like do you have a practice that's online. separate? So after you leave this anonymous experience where you've been able to delve into this potential creativity. Does it matter if it affects your own private creativity away from when you're not there? Or, or are they the same? I don't know. Do you have I don't get a... <laughs> this is when neither of us are an artist. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. If you asked us about Python, we would do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Does it follow? Yeah, I, I understand. Um, I don't know. Yeah, because like if, if like content and comments are ephemeral, like does that then like affect you? Is that like do you, do you take that experience with you as a person, or does does it kind of stay? Is it stay on the computer machine? And does it influence us? Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. But it's, uh, I guess it's just the the, the you know is you, you do many things and you you will remember a couple of things and as long as you are having fun at that at that point, that's all you will you will remember. It's like you you know we don't have much more history memory. That, I don't know if that's exactly what you're asking. I think, yeah. I, 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 um, I mean, I think that this is a question where um, you're, maybe there's an implication of another kind of practice or artistic practice, but this is it. This anonymous collaboration is, is it. Um, I have a question. Um, you know, to play devil's advocate on, on comment culture, people often hide uh, comments because they don't find them valuable. So a question is, you know, um, if this is a, does this have a name? Did I miss it? Behind. Behind, that's right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Behind, uh, if, um, when it, uh, <laughs> um, so when it's in, you know, full, full fruition, what, what do you imagine is there? You know, what kind of comments um, um, do you see? Are they adding value to the site or are they just feeding back to it? Um, I think that's a, the fun part of it. We don't know, but I think, I think it's gonna be, Interesting. Then they, they will maybe like really good conversations, and then maybe like people just trashing websites. I think. Yeah, I think it, a lot of it depends where we seed it. You know, if you seed it to 4chan, <laughs> like, uh, or if you seed it to like I don't know Nickelodeon, it's gonna look you know a lot different. Um, and I don't know that it really matters because. Again, if if that things just kind of disappear, it's you know it's kind of if the the canvas wipes itself every you know few few comments. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't really know. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, the, obviously, like comments are kind of relegated to the bottom of the page because you know right they don't they're sometimes they're really nasty and abusive. And I mean that's the way I think most of us feel like you're you're. Um, when you think about comments, you're like, oh man, they're just so bad. Like, I'm, it's hard to think of. Actually, the, somebody commented earlier, Flickr comments are really good. It's, it's interesting to look at how different communities, again, have like different kind of standards 
um, and like news websites and YouTube just attract like just really the nastiest <laughs> people. Um, and a lot of people have you know asked me with 4chan, they say, you know, does anonymity breed kind of like, a, you know, people are abusive, and I say, I think that's just like anecdotal, and it's not you know, entirely true, because, you know, 99% of the people who use 4chan use it in a really positive way, it's just that kind of like 1%, but, you know, that's just more of a, uh, you know, it's more indicative of just like some people are jerks than like, you know, a, you know, anonymous commenting, you know, kind of causing everybody to contribute a certain way. It's interesting because comments um, inspired a project last year. Ryan Tricartan, an artist who puts his videos online and gets a lot of comments back, like, I could do that better than you, um, came up with a video application program that sort of encouraged people to do it better than him. It was a little more creative, um, interactive. So, Elizabeth? I just had a quick com comment. I think this is really lovely and kind of sublime, and I think it's a really nice thing to think about when, when we're all thinking about um, art and creativity and sort of society on the internet, that this is our private lives now, and this is sort of where we live and speak and make culture. So it doesn't have to be a permanent sort of crystalline document. It doesn't even necessarily have to be about somebody's <coughs> creative practice. It's people talking and kind of creating culture in an in a, in ephemeral moment, just like we do in real life. So I think it's rad. Thank so. you. <laughs> um, ben. I just also wanted to say something along those lines, which was that there's something interesting about the shift from this ephemerality also goes with there's a there's a technical infrastructure part of that, which is that putting this on the client side means it's about it's about the ephemerality. It's sort of the idea that it's there. It's the server side of big data culture, which is about this like you know, permanent continuity and the idea that some of Ricardo's pieces, especially the sketchpad, which is really interesting because the refresh is only for you because there is someone else who still has their browser open and there is continuity there. So there's kind of this like uh, exquisite corpse of continuity going on, even if your individual you know sort of frame of reference is refreshed. And so there's something really interesting about this idea that there's a there is a continuity of concept that's not necessarily recorded anywhere, but it's being passed from sort of ephemeral participant to ephemeral participant. It's kind of an interesting, you know, there's no need for a server because it's a full understanding of what the current state of affairs is. So I was wondering whether you guys were considering, uh, is this a multi-user context like the like the sketchpad, or, or is this still something where it's just a state that's individual? Like, when we were thinking about it yesterday, it was for technical reasons, it was not going to be like that. But we may try. We'll see. Like, I, don't, I don't know. Do you, do you see? Like on, in, in some ways, like the flip side of the ephemerality is also the real time uh, one social the, nature. Of it. One of the things we'd actually considered was to think of, like, of this as a layer. Uh, like the way we implemented it was every URL gets its own its own layer, and I had suggested at one point that maybe it's just one layer, and like the website basically like change like we could do like a the website changes every sixty seconds, um, so it's like it's not the layer that the layer is permanent, but it's the website that's kind of changing behind this like invisible layer on top of it, and so like to see how I, I'd love if we could implement that too to to see like again to people or I don't even know that we would wipe the comments to just see like which comments if we have the ephemeral comments like which comments like stay on the page longer than others because like maybe some are like are more universal to all sorts of websites and so people would still kind of pile on one thread be it on cnn.com or google or you could almost uh, sort of rhizome a, a guess a guess of the sort of tags that you were categorizing the different websites by in the same way we're talking about the michael jackson song it's like the piece what are the comments that's that's foregrounded because they're all they're germane across all of these and it'd be cool to look at like language yeah that like kind of translates over lots of different sites and like specific yeah there's a lot we do i don't um, want to take up more time though no it's it's all good thank, thank you guys, guys. thank you